So this is the ship they say is unsinkable. Sir. It is unsinkable. Sir. God himself could not sink sir. this ship. How dare you, sir? How dare you? How dare you? How dare me when I how dare you? You big peepee -pee head, Mr. Booger Lips. Caca mouth. Hello world, welcome to LTS, my name is Steve. Here at LTS, we discuss a wide array of topics, all from a Christian perspective of course, with the end goal of pointing everyone to the only thing in life that really matters. If you like this video and channel, please do not forget to hit the like and subscribe button. Today we conclude our Titanic review series by discussing the biblical lessons that we can learn from the movie. So, all that being said, here we go. The story of the Titanic is a perfect example of what happens when we allow idols into our life. Now many hear the word idol and think about the old days when people would fashion a piece of wood or stone into a graven image. But God helped me see that an idol can really be anything from money, relationships, or even an actual American idol. The list goes on, but you get my point. Of course, none of the listed examples are wrong in and of themselves, but having an idol is wrong because either you've placed your faith in it over God, I have the high ground, or you pray to it like a God. For years, it's been debated on whether or not people of that time actually said, It is unsinkable. God himself could not sink this ship. But let's say that no one actually said that, that it was just a catchy headline. It really doesn't matter because the sentiment was there. Titanic to me wasn't an idol of worship, but an idol of faith that was supposed to be the be all and end all of ships that could withstand anything. I mean, so much faith was placed on this one ship ship that the safety of its passengers was put on the back burner. Not a great plan. An error that unfortunately ended the lives of 1,500 people. Now there's obviously nothing wrong with being proud of your creation, but you run into trouble when God-like faith is placed on anything apart from the true God. In the case of Old Rose, was she correct when she said, And that he saved me in every way that a person can be saved. Mm, wrong -o. By her saying this, it sounds like she's turned Jack into an idol as well. Now granted, Jack does save Rose's life multiple times, but the truth of the matter is that after all the heroics and goodwill, Rose is still going to die. That's messed up! The movie shows us that Rose ends up in a titanic heaven, but we have to ask ourselves the question, is this how the afterlife really works? No. The Bible says, And as it's appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. You see, Rose would have had her judgment appointment with God, and nothing about that meeting or its outcome would have been something that Jack could have interfered with. The thing about idols like Titanic is that it's very emblematic of a heart issue because while technically an idol is usually something that lays outside of us, it always points to the true idol. It's us, we, me, you. We want to be our own God that sets up the rules for our own life. It's all about me. And it's not just wanting to set our own rules, but it's specifically wanting to have a life that directly contradicts the will of Almighty God. A great example of this is when you hear things like, Is that speaking your truth is the most powerful tool we all have? What? which is just another way of saying that I determine what is right or wrong. When we know that only God dictates truth when the scripture says, Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. 
The movie Titanic reminds me of a passage of scripture where Jesus says, No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. And as you watch the movie, you can see that almost every character is idolizing something that's either not theirs to want or idolizing money, which I'm amazed the movie adds a very true statement when they say, Your money can't save you any more than it could save me. Get back! I mean, everyone in this movie is chasing after something. Rose is chasing after a different life. Cal is chasing Rose's affections. Jack is chasing after Rose, Mr. Ismay is chasing headlines, and the list just goes on and on. But the point is that in doing so, it causes them to do things that they would never do if they first chased the number one thing in life that really matters, which the Bible talks about when it says, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. We like telling ourselves that there are other options, but when we do, we're only lying to ourselves. And we can even lie to ourselves and say that we are serving God, when in actuality, we're only serving a false version of God. A God that's okay with everything and anything that we do. A God that all he is is love and that's it. To which I would say that just because you call your God Jesus, doesn't mean that it's not an idol. If we're going to follow Christ, we have to follow Christ for who he is and not what we would like him to be. The people on the Titanic who tragically lost their lives, I'm sure had no idea that their appointment with God was coming for them that day. And the thing about it is, is that nobody knows when their time is coming. And so my hope and prayer for everyone who's watching this is that if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, that you come to know him. It's not about saying flashy prayers or doing good things or about donations because with God none of that matters. Everything goes back to our hearts and seeing ourselves for who we are. We're sinners through and through. We have missed the mark and so the way to salvation is accepting that truth and realizing that we need to turn to Jesus in repentance because only in him can we be saved. And repentance is simply a change in mindset. It's surrendering your will to allow for God's will, making him the Lord of your life. And it's not about perfection because you're never going to be that. I mean, that's exactly the reason why we need Christ. Because the closer to God you get, the more you'll begin to see the changes in your life. And then find a good Bible-believing church. And I stress Bible-believing church. Money! And with that being said, we come to the end of another video. Before I forget, I'm going to start releasing a new video every other Friday because this will allow for me a chance to put out good, high quality videos. But that being said, if you like this video and channel, please do not forget to hit the like and subscribe button. And until next time, I pray God's blessing on you and that you always seek him first. It's all about me.